Hi, uh, good morning everyone, and it's uh, good to see you all here, especially after the small snowstorm that just happened a while ago. Uh, from India, we, we don't get snow quite, off, quite a bit, and it was quite surprising for me seeing snow right in the morning when I got up. I had to rush into the venue, and I had my good dose of cardio early in the morning, so I'm all pumped up uh, for the talk. <laughs> So yeah, uh, a quick short talk where uh, you know I would be talking about how I learned how to build courses, uh, and hence the title "Mastering Myself Before Mastering Kai A uh, Quick introduction about me: I am Atul Priya Sharma, and I am from Hyderabad, India. I work as a senior developer advocate at InfraCloud Technologies. I am also a CNCF ambassador and the co-chair for the Platforms Working Group. Uh, my day-to-day -day job involves writing a lot of code, building a lot of content around code, and then helping people and companies adopt those technologies or POCs that I build. So in a way, I would call myself a certain percentage as an educator as well. Uh, outside of work, I am a big-time foodie and a travel blogger. So when I'm not working or doing anything related to my work, you can find me at a restaurant or a cafe trying out something new. Uh, these are my social handles on Instagram, Twitter, X, and LinkedIn, where you can connect with me. Uh, so this was the course that me and my colleague Sonali were a part of, uh, Mastering Kubernetes Security with Kaiverno. Uh, it's available on the LF website. And we did this about a year ago. It's been, I guess, close to a year since we built this course. And it was a first time for both of us. Uh, sadly, she couldn't be here, but then I'm here to share our combined journey and learning experiences of the course. So I'll go back a little in time, and here is a picture of where it all started. Uh, this is a Facebook memory from 25th February 2014, uh, and it's when I was in the final year of my college. And what you see here is me sitting in the middle with all my friends around me. And it was just a couple of hours before entering the examination hall. And it was a ritual for us. So anytime before exam, a lot of my friends used to gather around me, and we would do a quick revision of whatever the subject is. If it's a database exam, we all would sit together and we'll have our notes, what are the you know, uh, various principles, RDBMS, NoSQL, et cetera, and we would discuss that. So I've been in such space for ages now, right from school to college, where I was helping friends uh, and all of us you know, study right before the exam and get into the uh, you know, exam hall with some essential notes. So that's how it all started. Uh, and then I got into software engineering. I was a developer for most part of my career. Uh, I moved into developer advocacy for about three years now. And that is where I could leverage my technical skills as well as the skills of creating a course or mo more importantly, you know, teaching people or making them aware of more new technologies and platforms. So as part of my developer advocacy role, I do a lot of uh, content around, you know, it can be written, it is, uh, it is as a webinar or as a talk like these, where I try to learn a lot of things and then try to share my learnings with someone so that it helps them adopt that particular technology or the tool. So these are a few sessions uh, you know, that I have given at a lot of places. So my journey into course creation was started by teaching my friends back in school and college, uh, followed my, my role of developer advocacy where uh, my skills of, my technical skills, as well as my ability to help my friends ace their exams, that helped me, and then eventually that led me to becoming a course creator. Uh, so when this course came in, it was obviously a great opportunity, but then a lot of questions were in my head. And I'm sure if, if any of you in this hall get such an opportunity, you would have these questions as well. So you know, first and foremost, you'll be like, hey, where do I start? My head has a lot of ideas, but I cannot organize them. You know, I'm sure this is something that a lot of you would relate to. How deep should I go into each topic? Because once you start writing about something, and especially if you're passionate about one section of, of, the, of the entire course or a chapter, for example, I'm interested in monitoring. I can go on and on and talk about Grafana and Prometheus, but is that actually required? You know, how deep should I go into every topic? And then how do I make sure participants actually learn and not just read? Especially in this age, you know, when there are courses around, uh, a lot of people, when they try to complete a lot of courses, they would just click on next, 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 and then move forward, right? So you don't want that. You want people to learn as well. And how do I make complex 
topics more digestible, you know, break them into chunks. And what if someone points out the mistakes in my content? You know, there's always that worry, uh, you know, before you start out. So how do you actually start when you have so many questions uh, in your head, right? So the first and foremost is conquering the inner voice, famously or infamously known as the imposter syndrome. Everyone has it. How do I start? Am I worthy enough of doing this, right? Uh, you know, things like, but I, I'm not an expert. Should I be doing this? Or maybe, you know, someone else could do it better than me. Or what if I make mistakes? I'm sure a lot of people would relate to such things. And I only say that you are a bridge between a new learner and him becoming an expert. So you are the bridge in between whose sole responsibility is to take him on a journey from being a new learner to being an expert. Your job is not to make him an ex expert, right? So you give him all the tools and things that is required for him or her to become an expert. That's it. And each of your journey could be different. So I always give an analogy of a typical university or a school teacher, right? Uh, when a professor is teaching maths, there would be five or ten different professors. And then, you know, every professor has a different style of teaching. So everyone is unique, everyone has their own style. And then you obviously start with the foundation, uh, you know, always start with the end in mind. You assume, uh, you, you figure out what should be the end goal of the course, what the people or the learners who would be a part of the course, what they would want from the course. So start with the end, map the journey of the, the learner, you know, how do you want them to start? Uh, prepare a maze, start with, you know, basic concepts and then taking them to advanced levels. And with that, you create a detailed outline. Only when you have a detailed outline, that is when you will be able to stick to it and ensure that whatever the things are required, they are part of it. Once you have the outline in place, you start with the basics, of course. Uh, so you find out all the co concepts that are required. You know, In case of Kyberno, it was about rules, it was about policy engines, the type of rules that are required. And then obviously, you know, advanced topics like how do I do it at a multi-tenant level or how do I add monitoring to it. Uh, and then once you have your audience defined, the, the previous stage, you can use better real-world analogies for them to relate with. You know, as an uh, admin, as, as a Kubernetes admin, how do you use Kyberno to, let's say, you know, restrict your developers to ensure they don't use a pod with 8 gigs of RAM when they are testing something, right? You don't want that. So how you can use Kyberno to build a policy? So giving them such examples will help them uh, help, help the learners understand better what the context is, and keep having knowledge checkpoints after every section, after every logical break, so that by the time they are done with the particular course or a section, they know that, okay, this is what I have learned, and they can check uh, themselves. Uh, coming to the technical content, you know, you need to understand the path to production. How will the journey start from teaching them the basics and then taking them to the last stage of how that would go into a production level scenario? So you build that journey. Have troubleshooting guides in place. Uh, you know there are already a lot of videos and tutorials and courses out there on different technologies tools. But then you know troubleshooting is different for everyone. You know what the problem that I am getting, why you know you might not have it. So it's always better to include a troubleshooting guide so they know what they can expect and how to overcome them. Uh, keep the examples version controlled. It makes your lives easier as a, as a creator. Uh, you know if, because in future if there is any update, it, everything resides at one place. It makes it easy for you. Even for the learner, they find everything at one place. Uh, for the hands-on exercise, guided, semi-guided exercises have to be there, you know, guide them with exact steps, do this, do this, do that. Or you tell them that, hey, you do this, this is the scenario, build this and, you know, uh, submit. So you can do that. Give them actionable and practical insights and also talk about common pitfalls. Like, you know, when you are setting up uh, a Kyberno policy and if you have multiple policies in place, these policies might interfere with each other. So this is a, a pitfall. So you can call out such things so that they know that when they are doing examples or building something for themselves, they know what are the problems that uh, they can come, uh, come across. So to wrap up the, the, the quick uh, talk, you know, start small and plan big. You know, you start with outlining the basic things that would be required for you to build the course, map your learner's journey, and then you plan big. Your goal is to help the learner start from the basics and try to help them become a, a you know, expert in that particular technology. Follow the 30, 40, 20 rule. So 30% of the time you spend researching about the topic or the tool that you're doing, which includes your hands-on, you know, learning about it, trying it on different scenarios, different setups, so you spend time on that. The next 40% of the time, you actually sit and start building the course. That is, you know, putting the examples in place, writing the examples, writing the content. And then the next 20% is when you actually review it and then refine it, 
a lot of peer review cycles before you actually go ahead and publish it. Uh, document everything that you do across your entire journey, irrespective of whether, whether it was a success or a failure. Because trust me, when you have these things planned, it makes your lives super easy, so that you know you can go through it whenever you know you're doing it next time. And then lastly, you know you follow the research, record, review, refine, release cycle. So you research it, record what you have learned, review what you have created, refine based on the feedback that you get, and then release the course in the wild. So with that, uh, I'm done with my 10 minutes. These are my social handles where you can connect with me. And uh, though this was just my first course, I'm looking forward to doing something more uh, exciting as part of my role as well. So thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you.